Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Police say there's one less prowler operating in Macomb County thanks to teamwork between neighbors and police. New video just into our newsroom of a fight inside a Detroit gas station that ended with one of these people shot. And it's all gone. A young couple who put in the work to grow their small business can't believe how quickly thieves were able to drive it away. Topping our news tonight at 6, that happened in the dark of night in Livonia. And now a local couple is missing $20,000 worth of landscaping equipment, grinding their business to a halt. Thieves simply hooked up to their trailer and drove it away. Steve Garagiola had a chance to speak with these young entrepreneurs. Uh, Steve, this is their livelihood. Well, you know, a situation like this just makes you mad because you have these young people who are working hard, they're doing the right thing, and somebody just steals their business from them. This is uh, experienced thieves. There were really two thefts Sunday night, this same parking lot, within an hour. Around the corner, a guy lost a car trailer. Down here, this space belongs to Kirsten and Chris. This is supposed to be their landscape business. Their trailer was parked right here, and somebody took that as well. They're just hoping for a little help to get their business back. Kirsten and Chris are the co-owners of All American Maintenance. They came to work yesterday morning, didn't see their trailer parked in its usual spot, and hoped this was just some kind of mix-up. Called the landlord. He said he didn't move it. We asked all of our neighbors around. They had come in multiple times during the day said they never saw anything. It soon became clear that Sunday night into Monday morning, someone stole their landscape trailer with $20,000 worth of equipment inside. We got an opportunity to start our own business and we took it and now somebody took our business. 160 accounts that we can't service right now because we don't have any of our stuff. Take a look at surveillance video. Now these were bold thieves. First, they stole a car trailer from this same parking area behind the building. Yeah, I had a chain to the fence, multiple locks. Uh, you know, it was hidden in the corner. I, you know, wouldn't have thought it was a target. They took that trailer someplace, dropped it, and 30 minutes later came back to steal the landscape trailer. Unfortunately, you can't see a license plate, but the hope is somebody knows something and will come forward. But just hope and keep putting it out there. Someone will come up. I mean, we'll do anything for it. We just want our equipment back. We just, it's everything we have. Yeah, they just want their equipment back. Now, in the garage, thankfully, some of their equipment was locked up in here. But the problem is some of the smaller mowers, which are very expensive, they need those to get into these smaller yards, and they can't do that right now. So they're hoping somebody who knows something will speak up, feel guilty, and just bring it back and they can get back to business. Back to you, Devin hey, Kimberly. Steve, I hate to say it, but that surveillance video didn't offer very much detail. I mean, if you talk no. about a license plate, it's hard to even make out what kind of truck it is. Is there any other camera or anything that may have picked something up? Well, oh, there's another camera. Look straight up here, right over their garage, there's a camera. They talked with the landlord this morning. He said, oh, yeah, cameras don't work. Sorry oh. about that. So this afternoon, Chris went out and got his own camera. They've spent their own money to put a camera up here to hopefully if it, somebody comes back. And this place has been hit like half a dozen times within Jeez. the last year. So they're trying to protect themselves because the landlord kind of dropped the ball on this one. Yeah, can't too much blame him. All right, thanks, Steve. Over here with Ben now, we're watching a little bit of rain on the radar, but it looks like it's kind of playing hide and go seek at the moment. Yeah, there's not a lot out there, and so many of us need much more yeah, than we got yeah. over the weekend. And we had a ton in some spots, but uh, here's what we've got on Fort Live Radar tonight, and it's pretty paltry. Uh, the showers that we have seen that have been at least decent, most of those have been north of 69. A couple lightning strikes coming out of Tuscola County, uh, but those seem to be fading pretty quickly. So not a lot of us are going to get wet tonight with those uh, showers and possibly a rumble of thunder, but most of this stuff is going to be a brief shower at best. Uh, it'll be spotty at least through about 10 o'clock tonight. Then we'll start drying out. See those temperatures dropping into the mid 70s. Humidity sticks around tonight, but we will be seeing that go away. We're going to see cooler temperatures and we do have other chances of rain. So if you're still looking for more, we've got you covered. Don't forget to download the local forecasters app because when it finally does rain, you'll be able to see it right there on your phone and it is free in your app store by searching WDIV. Police in Detroit are looking for a man accused of shooting a transgender woman on the city's west side. Take a look here. It happened at a gas station near West Seven Mile and Greenfield. Police say an argument broke out and the man pulled a gun. Surveillance video shows the woman trying to take the gun away from him 
and she was later shot. The man fled shortly thereafter. If you recognize him, call Detroit police. Following the congressional hearing going on in Washington on protecting collegiate athletes, a Senate subcommittee asked Michigan State's interim president John Engler and leaders of USA Gymnastics and the U.S. Olympic Committee to come and answer questions. Nick Monticelli has been following this in the newsroom. Uh, not too happy with John Engler's answers at, at times today. No, not at all. In fact, you could tell that some of the questions were pointed directly at Engler for very specific reasons. In fact, one of them pointed at the interim president, asked him, is there a culture of covering things up at Michigan State University? <laughs> the praise in the hearing went to the survivors. The heat was aimed at MSU President John Engler, Senator saying his behavior has been disrespectful towards survivors. If your presence is so harmful to survivors, why should you keep your job? We have fixed the problems in the medical clinic now by strengthening the protocols, strengthened the evaluation of Dean, arrived at a $500 million settlement to put some litigation behind, fully cooperated with all the investigations, and we are also starting a process to bring a new president in. Engler did spend a good amount of time talking about the steps the university has made to prevent sexual abuse. But something that came up several times was an email he sent accusing the first survivor to come forward, Rachel Denhollander, of looking for a payday. It reflects an attitude at the top of the institution that you're asking this committee, your students, your current athletes, your alumni to trust. And I think you have some repair work today, to put it mildly. <laughs> Another issue surrounded a meeting between Engler and survivor Kayla Lorenz. Months ago, she said Engler offered her a settlement asking how much it would take. Engler denied it then and did under oath again today. The ranking committee member doesn't believe him. These survivors were disbelieved for so long. And I just want to say for the record, I believe Kaylee Lawrence in her account. Now, one of the biggest takeaways from today's hearing is that there have been recommendations from athlete advocates that just weren't listened to. And get this one, Devin, some systematic issues where one branch of an organization knows about a sexual abuse claim and they just couldn't tell the other one. Therefore, that person was able to stay in their role. Which next takes us to the to the other focus of today, which is uh, them asking what has Michigan State done since uh, the scandal broke uh, at first? Yep. So Michigan State has actually come out a couple of months ago and outlining the things that they did. And Engler talked about those again today, saying that they have implemented new rules for patient consent and patient rights. Also talking about how they do now require patient chaperones in the exam rooms. And they also are making all of their athletic trainers report now to medical staff. Yeah, all right. Fascinating day in Washington. All right, Nick. Kim. Detroit business owner Robert Stanzler is formally charged with assault and battery following an incident last week in Eastern Market. And now Eastern Market has suspended Stanzler, who owns Detroit Mercantile Company. Larry Spruill is live with the latest on what began as an argument about parking. Is that right, Larry? Yeah, Kimberly, and that argument was caught on cell video. It happened here inside this parking lot right here. Now, today inside the courtroom, the judge asked the, the lawyer asked the judge for a low bond. Although he is not allowed to work in Eastern Market anymore, the, the lawyer says that he needed a low bond because he needed to operate his business. Now, a judge offered him a $5,000 bond. Do it again. Wow, that's assault. You know that's assault, right, Robert? This video of Robert Stansler spitting in the face of 29-year-old Abraham Faison's face is gaining a lot of attention over the last week or so. Faison is a local security guard in Eastern Market. Everything happened on July 17th around 9.30 in the morning. Police say Robert Stansler was upset about parking by others on his property when he made an obscene gesture. Seconds later, you see him spitting in Faison's face. The victim recorded this video and showed police. Stansler was arrested, but later released. 1-80-454-0401, people say in Michigan versus Robert Stansler. Tuesday, he faced a judge hearing the charges he's now facing for the first time. He's facing a misdemeanor of assault and battery.
And I also reached out to the victim to get his side of the story. He tells me he is not ready to talk on camera just yet. The next court date will be August 2nd. We're live tonight on Larry Sproul, Local 4. A Bloomfield Township man has been arrested in connection with a string of robberies across Oakland County. Police say the man confessed to robbing or attempting to rob six different banks and credit unions in Ferndale, Birmingham and Lathrop Village. After robbing a bakery in Oak Park, he was stopped by police unaware of the connection. They let him go. He was later apprehended and brought into custody. We still await word on what exact charges he will face. Uh, over in New Haven, a man has been charged with home invasion. Sheriff's deputies were responding to a home after electronics were reported stolen. While on the scene, a neighbor provided video showing a man attempting to enter his home as well. The electronics were tracked to a home in East Point, and 27-year-old Steve Mason was taken into custody. If convicted, he'd face up to 20 years in prison, a probable uh, probable cause for hearing. Uh, let me try it again. A hearing for probable cause is scheduled for August 1st. A multi-million dollar development could be coming to the city of Wixom. Damas Group purchased 82 acres of empty land surrounding its home base on Beck Road, just north of I-96. Preliminary plans for land include a 100,000 square foot water park and luxury hotel. Earlier this month, three parcels of land were sold for $3.9 million. All right, let's see what Lester Holt and his team are working on for Nightly News tonight, immediately following this newscast. Lester live tonight from New York with a preview of Hi, Lester. Hey, Kim and Devin, we're covering severe weather tonight. We're looking at extreme heat taxing the power grid in the west and sparking uh, wildfires, also strong storms and flooding, forcing evacuations and rescues in the east. Also tonight, raising the alarm over how American secrets are winding up in China. When we see you tonight for NBC Nightly News, for now, back to you in Detroit. All right, Lester, we'll see you in 20 minutes from now or so. Uh, yes, your dog loves you, <laughs> but does it know when you're in trouble? Great question. Well, there's fascinating new research on exactly what our dogs think and feel when we're in distress. Mm. And there's a problem with absentee ballots ending up in the wrong hands. Find out why one local community is reminding voters of what not to do.